here. This is going to be the third and final video on the basics of market profile. Um, the next videos that I make about this, um, there'll be more about how I use it. Um, but real quick though, if you enjoy these types of videos, please leave a like, subscribe, and share with others. Before I get into the different types of days and the openings, um, just a few things I'd like to say. If you want to use Apex Trader funding, I highly suggest them. I have a coupon code down below that will save you 80% off the first month and the recurring months. I also um, have a coupon code for $30 off of Jigsaw Trading. This is the DOM that I use. I personally believe that it's the best DOM out there. I've made multiple videos on them, so feel free to check them out. I also created a Substack um, where I post um, plans and reviews. Um, sometimes I'll share um, how I came up with my plans for the day, um, and then my reviews of things such as the footprint, market profile, um, and the DOM and stuff like that. So go ahead and check that out as well. And uh, you can subscribe, it's 100% free. And finally, if you're not following me on Twitter, make sure you're doing so. Link for all these things will be down below. Now that all that stuff is out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the video. So, oops. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so days, day and opening types. So the first type of day that we'll be discussing is known as a normal slash balance day. Mostly short time frame participants are active throughout the day. Wide initial balance, this tells us that larger time frame traders were only present in the first hour. Usually the initial balance high and initial balance low are good areas to trade off of. There's no clear direction and it's shaped like a D. And the reason why it's called a normal slash balance day is because we tend to close in the middle. So this is a profile right over here. You can see how volume is distributed evenly across. And it's a nice balanced profile. You have some excess at the top, some excess at the bottom, and we close right about in the middle of the range. And then this is just the profile split up. So if you remember in part two, I explained how these are pretty much 30 minute intervals. So you can see how they're kind of overlapping. You know, you see a little break below, overlap, overlap, you see a little break below, but then quickly it comes back into this balance. And then it just keeps on overlapping, overlapping, it doesn't even penetrate this low, and then just, you know, goes back. Next up is, are known as trend days. This is when large time frame participants are present the whole day while short time frame participants are providing liquidity. Small initial balance that is broken and continues to go higher slash lower. Buyers slash sellers are trying to find new value for price. We tend to close on the extremes. So in this example over here, um, you can see that we opened uh, right about here. Market, you know, traded around. And we have all the, we have these different single prints implying that the sellers took initiative and we ended up closing on the low. And then when I split the profile up, you can see I kind of have a tight initial balance. Um, B overlaps with A. C doesn't even um, penetrate uh, B, um, B's period. And then eventually D breaks out. And we just see something known as, if you remember one time framing lower, that is when we break the previous low constantly. You see this low is breached, this low is breached, this low is breached, this low is breached, and then this low is breached. Next up is something known as double distributions. This is when there are two distri distributions that are separated by single prints. Large time frame participants are present. Kind of looks like a capital B. We tend to close at the highs or lows. Implies buyers slash sellers are initiating prices higher slash lower. First distribution shows a period of price discovery and can be seen as early, while the second distribution can be seen as a shift in value for a market. So in this example over here, you see this distribution over here. And then intraday, we have these single prints that the uh, buyers took and they took the initiative to drive price higher and they explored it price higher and we found acceptance. And then we um, distributed more volume and spent a lot more time here. And then this is it split up. Um, you can see how these periods are kind of overlapping and then we see this initiative taken by the buyers and then we see you know just the market um, um, balance and distribute over here. Next up is something known as the P-shape. It shows us sellers who are short covering, close near the high of day usually. We tend to see a reversal the day after due to the lack of initiative buying. Um, this is usually seen as a fail auction. This is important to understand that it depends on where we open. Um, I can, when I make a, uh, a fourth video for this, I'll kind of discuss the different, the different ways to play these different days, the day after, depending on the open. 
Um, this is known as short covering rallies. Short covering rallies can be due, due to short time frame participants who got too short, and inventory is too short, um, or shorts are taking profit, or the long time for participants are forced to cover their positions. Um, something Dalton um, said in Mind Over Markets is short covering is caused by old business, not by new participants entering the market. And then this is the P shape profile. You can see that the market opened here. Um, and you can see how, it, how it's sort of shaped like a P, you know, there's only um, this, this, um, this P over here, this thin volume and only uh, A period was spent here. And then the rest of the day volume was conducted here. And we have this P shape, you can even see it on the volume profile. Next up is something known as the lowercase B shape. It shows us longs who got too long and are forced to liquidate their positions. Tends to close near the lows and we tend to see reversals the next day depending on the open. Known as long liquidation breaks due to short time frame participants who have gotten too long and inventory is too long and long time, fr long time frame participants exiting their longs. So as you can see in this example, once again, um, market is shaped like a B, implying that um, longs got too long. Next up is something called the neutral day extreme. This is when the initial balance is quite tight. We see how large time frame participants are fighting in both directions and trying to initiate, and the market ends up closing on one side, implying which side won the battle. As you can see here, um, compared to the neutral day, neutral days tend to close in the middle, while this tends to close you know, at the upper or lower end. So next up is the open, um, the importance of the open. The open establishes the day's tone. Looking at the different types of opens, you can get a sense of what type of day we will have. Most activity occurs at the open and we'll see the size coming through to determine strength. We see where we are opening in comparison to the previous day slash week slash month. That's kind of the way I look at the open. First up is called the open and drive. When the open is above slash below the previous day's value area and we move in one direction from the open, the market goes full steam and never looks back. This type of open implies that we have other time frame participants present in the market. If we open above the value area high, signs you can look for a very aggressive large buy orders hitting the tape. If we open below the value area low, um, signs you can look for a very aggressive large sell orders hitting the tape. We have little to no volume conducted in the A and B period and they serve as the low of day slash high of day. B period rarely tests A period. So in this example over here, you can see how we opened um, below the value area over here. Um, the value area for this chart is the purple for the TPO and for the volume profile, it's this grayish purplish area. So we open below value area um, and then we just, you know, straight up just kept drilling and drilling and drilling. Open test drive, very important to understand so much of the open drive, but in this, we test an important area before bouncing, implying there is a successful auction occurring because new prices are being defended. So um, I defined some important areas such as single prints, previous low of days, previous high of days, value area high, value area low, or a or, um, point of control. We have little to no volume conduct in the A and B period and they serve as a low of day. And once again, B does not really penetrate much of, much of A's range. So in this example over here, the market's gapped up. Um, this red right over here represents the open. We came, we tested the previous high of day, and then um, we found that there's no interest in sellers over here and then the market just bounced and I believe this was like a 90 point rally or something like that. Uh, next up is something known as the open rejection reversal. Price opens above slash below the previous day's range slash value area and tests an important reference point, fails to bounce and reverses. Once again, some important reference points include the previous high of day, value area high, value area low, point of control and previous low of day. It implies a failed auction, implies buyers slash sellers are unable to initiate a move higher slash lower. So in this example over here, I um, this is crude over here. You can see that we gap down, came in, tested the previous low of day, rejected it, and then we sold off. Um, if this was going to reverse, we would have found acceptance over the. Um, we found some acceptance over here, but we failed to, and this is it just combined. Next one, something known as a balance open. The market opens up in the previous day's range. It has a high chance of remaining in balance and overlap in the range. It tends to occur on days where there's no important news planned or holidays. Markets tend to be waiting for some big news and we only see small time frame, time frame participants um, present. So this is an example. You can see the markets just open over here. You know, opens right here in the middle of the balance. Opens right here in the middle of the range again. 
middle of the range slash balance, middle of the range slash balance, and then opens right here in the middle of the range slash balance once again. So um, it's all about, um, and this is a just um, split. So these are all of the basics explained. Um, now it's all about just putting the pictures, the picture together and all the, all the context clues and um, kind of using what the market's giving you to understand where the market wants to go. Um, the market profile is, like I said, in my opinion, one of the best tools to look at the structure. Um, I don't make trading decisions off of it. It will allow me to generate trading ideas, but it won't um, be um, something for me to confirm or uh, be a reason for me to get in. Um, that's something that I use the DOM slash footprint for. Um, but I hope this series was helpful for you guys, and I'll see you guys around. Take care, everyone.